to the podcast that must not be named. I'm Melissa. And I'm Luke. And we are reading Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Chapter 10, Halloween. And we'd like to wish all of you a happy St. Patrick's Day. This particular chapter was 17 pages long and is 5.5% of the book. The morning after their close encounter of the three-headed kind, Ron and Harry revel in the memory of their midnight adventure and in Malfoy's dumbstruck face that they had not been caught while they ponder on what the grubby package Harry saw Hagrid removed from Gringotts could be. But Hermione avoids talking to the boys after the previous night's shenanigans. Harry receives a long, thin package at breakfast, along with a letter telling him not to open the package in the Great Hall, as it contains his new Nimbus 2000 broom, and lets Harry know about his first Quidditch session with Wood that night. Malfoy is dumb-stricken again when Flitwick does not reprimand Harry for having a broom while other first years are not allowed at all. Harry distractedly gets through his lessons that day and unpacks his new broom on his bed. He takes the new Nimbus down to the Quidditch pitch where he is amazed by the 50-foot high hoops at each end of the field and takes the broom for a spin. Wood is amazed by Harry's natural flying talent. They go over the different positions of the sport and the general rules before training until it gets dark that night. By Halloween, the first years have mastered the basics and begin learning how to make objects fly in charms. Hermione is the only student to perform the charm successfully, much to Ron's chagrin. As the students leave the lesson, Hermione overhears Ron call her a nightmare, and she hurries past them with tears in her eyes. She doesn't even show up to the remainder of their classes that day. In the Great Hall... The Halloween feast offers many dishes appearing on the table, much like the beginning of the year feast. Quirrell bursts in to exclaim that a troll is in the dungeons, and all of the students are led back to the dormitories, except Harry and Ron, who remember overhearing that Hermione was crying in the girls' bathroom all day. While hurrying off to inform her of the troll, they notice Snape heading towards the third floor, and then accidentally lock the troll in the bathroom with Hermione. The boys rush in to wrestle the troll, and through teamwork, they knock it out with its own club. McGonagall, Snape, and Quirrell burst in afterwards, and Hermione takes the heat for the boys and calls them heroes. From that moment on, Hermione Granger became their friend. We had just a few characters introduced. I feel like now that we're more than halfway through the book, there's not as many new people coming in. Sure, definitely. The first one was just a mention, and it was by Professor Flitwick, and it was Wizard Barufio, who said his R's instead of F's and ended up with a buffalo or something along those lines. R's and R's and F's. Uh, Yeah, I don't remember specifically. So he says one letters of the other and buffaloes appear. And the other character is the troll. The location introductions that we had this chapter, again, I think this list is going to start shrinking as we move forward. Right. um, Are the Quidditch field and the girls' bathroom. There was a lot of magic vocabulary in this chapter, however. First and foremost, the words associated with Quidditch. For example, the chaser, who are the three people who throw the quaffle, the red ball. Then we have the beater. There's two of them. Who hits the bludger with... Their club. It's not called anything. It doesn't have a name? No, it's just a club, like a small baseball bat. with a small baseball bat. So the beaters... Hit the bludger, and there's two bludgers with the baseball bat. One quaffle, two bludgers, two beaters to hit the two bludgers, three chasers to catch the quaffle. Then we have the seeker, 
which was mentioned in the last chapter, not that we had any idea what it meant. And that's the person who catches the golden snitch, which is basically like a golf ball sized flying gold ball that nobody can see except for the seekers. There is one more player that is the keeper, whose job it is to keep the red quaffle out of the balloon blowing like 50 foot high poles. And something bubble, called the bubble blowing. Bubble blowing. Thank you. Bubble blowing poles. And something called a Quidditch Cup, which I guess they can win. A couple other um, magic vocabulary that we have is the spell Wingardium Leviosa. Mm-hmm. Along with its hand technique, the swish <laughs> and flick. Yes. Very important. And another broom is mentioned, a Comet 260. That's the one that Malfoy has, and Ron gives him a hard time. Uh, and then, yeah. Also the Nimbus 2000. It was mentioned in Diagon Alley. We didn't mention it. Yeah, we did. In Diagon Alley. Nimbus 2000. It's on there. Is it? Yep. Oh, I'm looking I at the wrong thing. Okay. I know. I was a little worried about you. Yeah, okay. no, that's, that's why I, I took it off there. All right. Luke's so good. He's make lovely. A, make a note, That's it. He gets one point. Note of that. One point. We'll just we'll just add that audio clip into every episode. <laughs> just just copy paste. Copy God. paste. The oh <laughs> the the joys of being the, the yeah, executive they're... producer. <laughs> I'm I'm just the talent. It's okay. Oh, oh the big bucks. <laughs> All right, Luke, so your in-depth analysis, what were some of your thoughts? All right. So one, this is quite in-depth. The troll stink is gross. And by in-depth, I mean deep in the nose stink. (laughs) It sounds terrible. Yes. Harry sniffed and a foul stench reached his nostrils. A mixture of old socks and the kind of public toilet no one seems to clean. That sounds dreadful that does sound dreadful so that was my first notice yes it's a good description of something smelling terrible i really you get a very good detail of what she wants it to smell like you you, there is very little room for imagination left so what if what if the troll really only smells like old socks and they're in a bathroom so they're in a bathroom maybe the bathroom just doesn't get clean i don't know it's a girl's bathroom though yeah i don't know i'm just saying that's not a comment on girls' bathrooms at all. I'm just saying. We don't know anything about the janitorial experience and, of Hogwarts. And, and that actually goes along with something that I said, one of my thoughts. What kind of bathroom has loose has taps and loose pipes laying around available for kids to start throwing at random trolls? Right. Like, it seems kind of unsafe that they can, like, okay, so maybe Harry in some burst of strength ripped a tap, which is, you know, like the knobs and the faucet. So ripped a tap off. Fine, I'll give you that. But Ron uses a pipe. He's not ripping the pipe out of the wall. So is there pipes randomly laying around the wall, so, around the room? So what I was thinking was, as the troll goes in there and Hermione screams, the troll could have smashed using his club Yes, but that was not specifically stated. It wasn't stated. I'm just saying why there could have been a strewn pipes Which and also fixtures. also could be why there was that smell, because if he is destroying things, you're destroying some toilets, and yeah. it, you know? Yeah. Although, I'm still gonna go with the troll stinks. Yeah, no. That's... The troll stinks, and a bathroom shouldn't have pipes laying around. Yep. I'm leaving it at that. Yep, that's fine. <laughs> After the troll is announced by Quirrell, and all of the students are filing out, mm-hmm. lo and behold... Percy the Prefect is, again, the only Prefect we hear about. (laughs) Is he the only Prefect? I think he's the only one who cares. He's just the only one that cares. He's the only one who cares. He was was in his element. Yes. I get to be in charge, and I'm going to make sure, because look at me being wonderful. And it's not to say that other Prefects weren't there directing, too. He just was the loudest. He was just, uh, like, they're like, sure, let him go. We'll follow behind, make sure nobody gets lost. They didn't do a very good job. Right. <laughs> right. But, yeah, no, I think it's just Percy being Percy. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's just funny mm-hmm. that... Perfect prefect Percy. He is the one that we know as well. True. So why would Harry no. go out of his way to mention in his... You know, he wouldn't notice other ones necessarily as much. Exactly. So, again, 
Harry's limited view is what we're seeing. And so right. that, that makes sense. Why I mean, Percy I would think be about artist. like when you're a freshman in high school, you know, there are seniors, but you don't really know who they are. You might know like the big captain of the football team and you might know a big brother of a friend, but you're not going to know all the other random people right. walking and around. Kind of similar like, well, to what I had in high school, you you didn't have this as you were the oldest of our family. You didn't have and an the older best. sibling and the there. Best. You didn't have an older sibling there <laughs> to help you get to know older students where, you know. For me, I had a sister, not you, obviously, who was one year older than me in school. And you, yes. And so I got to know people that she knew because I knew nobody else. So she was very nice and took me under her wing for a while. And it was just, I did get to know more people, but still outside of that, like you said, I I didn't know seniors, you know, outside of ones that went to our own grade school or whatever. But I mean, or we had another brother who had left the high school a couple of years before you. So if they, if the seniors had been friends with Benji when he had been there, then yeah. he might, you, you were the little, you know, right. Oh, you're so-and-so's yeah. little brother. Oh, and not you're, to mention lingering yeah. teacher, you know, overlapping teachers right. and things like that too. You know, we all had similar teachers yep. in, in various yep. things. So, yeah, I guess. So my experience would have been more similar to Harry with the whole having no being the first one in. Yes. Yep. No I background agree. knowledge. You walk in and know nothing. It was. It was not. I had a harder time um, in elementary school than high school. High school is easier. I always said I wanted a big brother. Then I got four little ones and I changed my mind. That was enough. Now now you have me, which is a... Now I have four little brothers and and that was plenty. I'm good. (laughs) Thanks. And a sister. She's pretty cool too. We're all decent. (laughs) Harry really does have incredible jumping prowess. (laughs) The, he the, does. The troll was described as he being play twelve foot tall. Yes, that's high. I mean, that's up there. Right. And he jumps up and grabs it around the neck. So, so that's at least a ten foot. His hands are at least foot ten jump. foot in the air. Right. Saying so he has a two foot tall head, which he has a small head, so it's actually higher than that. I'm assuming. That's the size of basketball hoop. It is the size of basketball. He should play basketball. Is an eleven year old right that could jump up and probably put his elbow in the and rim. He's short. They've always right. said he was short. Ron was the tall kid, right? So did he like get a running start and like jump off of a you know maybe a sink like and one he's either incredibly agile like a ninja and can jump <laughs> off a wall or up the up the troll or two Harry is using his trash can jump action again. <laughs> And and can go up, you know, twelve, maybe maybe more feet. That's that's incredible. We know we can get to a chimney. So what's a troll? You know. Yeah, I, I'm guessing it's probably his magical like reaction time. Mm-hmm. Sort of like I, I'm in this tense situation, just like when I was chased by Dur- Dudley, just like when my teacher was, you know, yelling at me in front of the class, and the magic just sort of ekes out. Yeah, I'm assuming it's that as opposed to this little short scrawny kid making a nice vertical leap sure yeah that that's stress-driven magic yes yeah that, basketball can be stressful might be a good clutch player just saying <laughs> yeah my next my next comment is ron is pretty dense and inconsiderate uh this pertains to his ill-timed uh insult of hermione uh calling her you know pretty much saying i understand why she doesn't have any friends because she's so bossy Right in front of her when she, I mean, she didn't do anything to really provoke him. I mean, she's just trying to help him out in the class and he just can't, I don't know, that's. I, part of me thinks this is just a kid thing. It's like the lack of social awareness Mm -hmm. that I see in a lot of kids, including my own, that one kid just thinks they're helping, but the way they're helping isn't how other kids want to be helped, but they don't know that because they only have their own limited view. And then other kids think this person's being so mean and bossy when really they don't realize they're trying to help because their limited view wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. It's conflicting personalities without realizing that people have different personalities. Right. Yeah. Conflict management with kids is not, not, (laughs) not the best. It's just because you're not exposed to it. I mean, until you are like that middle school age, which yeah. is what they are. When you're so self-conscious about everything anyway, yes. when someone points out something you're doing wrong, you're like, well, what else are they seeing that's going wrong? Yes. I mean, what else am I doing? I mean, it's 
it's all internalized and it's hard not to right. take and things personally, even when it is supposed to be just be helpful, you know? It's, right. Whereas Ron wasn't being nice. He, he he's pretty dense in general, but yeah. Hermione definitely took that to heart. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Uh, he just could have had a little more tact. Um, he, and maybe he'll get there. He'll, maybe he'll get, get there. there. Yeah, we'll see. So my, my last note that I have is as soon as Harry and Ron remember that they caused Hermione to go crying in the bathroom all day, Harry quickly jumps into hero mode and just no questions asked. We have to go save her. Not let's figure out what teacher or anything we can go ask for help. Let's go do this ourselves because that's the quickest, most efficient way of doing it. And we'll figure right. out the plan as we're going. It's very by the seat of your pants, but it is incredibly brave. You know, he doesn't know what he's doing, but he's doing, you know, and I think that's the more important part in this case. Yes, he's an actor, not a thinker. Mm -hmm. And not that it's, it, he is not thinking necessarily, but his his priorities, I think, are right. Right. I If it were me, I would have gone and got a teacher. <laughs> I would have found the adult in That's control. the Ravenclaw on you. It is very much the Ravenclaw on me. Here, what is the most what is the most effective way? I know I'm going to get the authority. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go try and figure it out by myself. Yeah. And this is why I will never be in a Gryffindor. Right. Nope. And and I, nope, I think nope, I nope. would I would lean towards that first, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't be against, you know, I would also probably be thinking about what I was doing while I was sprinting into the fire. You'd but, have plan A and B and C. And yeah, D. and plan right. B would probably be send Ron to go to teacher while I go figure this part out. There you <laughs> At go. At least create a diversion so that <laughs> just just delay the problem. But then the then the taps and loose pipes wouldn't have been thrown, and, and we would lose that whole interesting. Piece. Yeah. So those those are all my uh, all my in depth notes. Uh, as I did the summary, uh, I had a lot less than than you might have. So let's let's get into what you have. <laughs> All right, so my first one is, so Harry not only gets to break the rule about first years getting to play Quidditch, he also gets a free fancy broom. Yeah. That's pretty nice. Yeah, that is pretty nice. Special treatment. Yeah. Oh, look at the poor little orphan boy. Let's let's be nice to him. Oh, I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate here. Yes. We don't know that the other students don't have their brooms bought for them. We don't know that for sure. True. It It's not likely. It's not. We know that first years are not allowed to bring their own brooms. True. But they could be team-supplied brooms. There might be an alumni fund that pays in for the Quidditch team. But I don't I know. But I highly doubt that an alumni fund would buy one really, really nice broom because... Well, there's we... only one new player, and this is a new broom. Maybe they all get new brooms. This is just the year it came out. So you think the twins who each have the Comet 360s, those were the big top-of-the-line broom when they started the year before? Not likely. But I, again, I'm playing devil's advocate. I, yeah. I, I don't think this is the case. But at the same time, maybe it's based on the position. Maybe their position that they play maybe. is less broom savvy. You know, you or don't need as don't high need of a requirement. Much of their, okay. So that's that's my, my thought. I don't All say right. I believe it, but I think it's a fair. It's possible. Okay. So going back to the broom then. McGonagall knew the broom was coming. Because she had a letter that arrived concurrently to the broom's arrival. If she knew the broom was coming and she didn't want Harry to show off the broom, why didn't she arrange for a more discreet delivery? If she didn't want him to open it in front of everyone, why did she allow it to be delivered at breakfast? Mm -hmm. Or, and this is what I really think, was that her way to, you know, keep it a secret? While still being able to gloat to Snape or whoever that, oh, look at my new seeker and his new fancy broom, but don't open. Oh, is that a broom? Oh, I didn't know. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I told him not to open it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Wink, no. wink, nudge, nudge. Right. Exactly. Yeah. There were a lot of different ways this, this could have happened. Mm -hmm. uh, she could have sent the broom to Wood. You know, that right. wouldn't have been anything weird. It could have just, just been, been, hey, this is your new seeker's broom. Give it to him when you practice with him, and then send him a note. Send Harry a note saying, "Hey, you're meeting with Oliver Wood tonight. He, he has, has your broom." Yep. <laughs> like, or it could that would be just probably the easiest way of doing it. Been in the Quidditch, like wherever they keep all their supplies. It could have just been there because the team obviously knows he's on it, so mm -hmm. they won't care. Or up to his dorm room, right? I was or say, something. I was going to say we even we know that the 
his trunk magically made it up to his dormitory right. the very first day. So that's not a far-fetched idea that things can just appear in his room. So why didn't she... Yeah. Oh, no, I believe I, this is a conscious choice. This is, on this is absolutely her uh, being a little competitive a and little. Uh, still yes. abiding by the rules. Yes. In, in quotes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think you're right for sure. All right. Um, the next one is... I really like, this is just a little comment. I like that Flitwick made Neville's toad fly, that that was the example that he did on how to use when Guardian Leviosa. Although, why is the toad in a classroom? Yeah, we don't hear about too many of the other pets no. going around to classes. Although we know that um, Trevor does tend to escape yeah. a lot. He could have just appeared in the class. Yeah. Or he was in toad. Neville's pocket and Neville didn't also even true. know. Also true. I really like that Seamus set fire to the feather. Yeah. We don't hear much about Seamus, so I like that he, he gets a moment. Yeah, it's it's nice to start differentiating some of these other Gryffindors and other students, just to have something to so that they stand yes. out a little bit more. And uh, he, he's maybe not so much accident prone, but uh, from, from this, maybe he's just excitable? Possibly. Or maybe ignitable? <laughs> or, or just doesn't... Doesn't quite have the... The, right. The, the, he's not magic savvy yet. Or it's just that chemistry class, you know, the kid who's like, hey, I'm going to try this and okay. the blows up. He's an experimenter. You know? he, right. he, he just goes a little over the top. It could be. Yeah. Because fair. it's not like he gets the, the reputation of not being very magically apt like Neville does. Right. Yeah. He, he's so, not He's not Neville. <laughs> he's no Neville. Right. He didn't Neville this one up. <laughs> All right. So the next one is, so I get why Hermione is so upset. We talked about that a little bit. But I'm very shocked she skipped classes. Yeah. Like, it must have really hurt her. Yeah. And, and I think this is the first time we've seen her kind of humanized. I was going to say be human. She's not so much the uh, academic robot at at this point that we've seen. And I think yes. that's that's good because then, you know, Ron actually might learn a little bit on that, you know, hey... You really did hurt this person just because it doesn't look like they have feelings. They do. Exactly. Even if you don't see them, yes. they do. And that's a good lesson yes. to learn. All right. So my next one is, the feast appeared suddenly on the golden plates as it had at the start of term banquet. So we had food appearing at the Halloween feast. We had food appearing at the start of term banquet. But they've eaten three meals a day there and all the weeks in between. So how does food typically get served during Hogwarts meals? So I, I think it's probably kind of similar. It, it does show up, but it's more like it shows up on trays and it's not so extravagant where there's like a full seven course meal for everybody. Right. It's more like, oh, breakfast, here's a bunch of crumpets and biscuits and things like yeah. that that just show up and, you know, are like cinnamon buns or, um, and I, I don't, I think there's probably not quite the variety every day as these great feasts seem to have, which I think right. is good. Well, and also I, I get the impression that unlike the feasts, br dinner times are, and lunch times are similar to like a college where it's open from this time to this time. Right. It's not everybody coming in at once and being served simultaneously. Right. It's you sort show of up self serve and... within the hour. Sure. So probably the food is out buffet style on your tables and you just or a family style where it's in the middle you just pull what you want from there. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. It kind of mm -hmm. like it just had trays in the middle of the table. Yes. And each each great table has oh, yeah. its own. Cuz I would not go to share the with Hufflepuff the Hufflepuff table <laughs> or the Slytherin because they probably spit in their food. Poor Hufflepuff. It was so unnecessary to rip on the Hufflepuffs like I did. For all the Hufflepuffs out there listening, we really do like you. Yeah. No, we're we're cool with you. That's You're no, okay. No problem. You're no Slytherin. It's Ooh. all right. Burn. So now we get to the troll. Harry asks Ron how a troll could get in. So I agree. How? So we don't, we haven't seen any other entrance to Hogwarts besides those giant front doors, which are right across the hall from where the entire school is eating. Mm -hmm. And if trolls are so stupid. And stinky. And stinky and noticeable and damage causing, it's really unlikely the troll could make it from the entrance hall down to the dungeons without being detected how to get in yeah i don't think uh trolls are necessarily the most stealthy of uh creatures right so 
unless, like you said, we don't we haven't seen any other entrances. I'm sure there are. It's a big castle. There's there's got to be other entrances. Got to be something somewhere. You would think. I mean, although it is a castle, let me pull that back. Where it's they're typically built to be strongholds, so you minimize the entrances and exits, so it's easier to right. fortify and things like that. Right. But I don't know. It, it seems like it maybe had a helping hand, um, either either an external source figuring out a way to get it in, mm-hmm. sneak it in, or maybe maybe someone on the inside. Okay. So my next question becomes. When they are rushing out and all the teachers were ordered to go down to the dungeons to stop the troll and the prefix and, you know, perfect pre- perfect prefix Percy has to take the first years up or whatever. They see Snape going up to the third floor where we know that there is a giant three-headed dog as opposed to going down to the dungeons as he was told. Part two of that becomes... Why does Harry care so much about what Snape is doing? He has this weird mm-hmm. fixation on Snape's actions. Yeah, well, uh, the, on the Harry side, Snape has really singled him out. Snape has really singled Harry out. So it's hard not to kind of reverse that and be like, well, if he's singled me out so much, it's hard for me to ignore okay. him. You know, it, it's he's, he's just on his mind because he's so unfair to Harry. That's that's my first thought on that. Got it. Um, so I don't really know where he's going. We do know that the third floor is where the uh, forbidden corridor is. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's checking on that. Maybe, but I could. It's very suspicious. It is, and and Harry obviously thinks it's very suspicious that Snape is going up to the third floor where we know there's a giant three headed dog. Mm-hmm. As opposed to doing what he's told, which seems very like, oh, you're supposed to follow the rules and he's not following the rules. And so it definitely lends some darker, sheds mm-hmm. some darker light on Snape. Yeah. Something else we know is on the third floor corridor is it's the Charms Corridor. It is the Charms he Corridor. could be it depends checking on... out on Flitwick if he wasn't at, at Feast. We don't True. know. We don't know. True. And my last thought is, why does a bathroom have a key to lock it from the outside? And why is that key left in the keyhole? Yeah. <laughs> like, how often do people get need to be locked in the bathroom? Like, what is the point of that? Right. It's it's a 24-hour school. It's not like they're going to lock up at night because kids why, have access to the bathroom all the time. Usually, usually when a room has a key only on the outside. It's uh, like a storage a closet. prison? Storage closet. Store both? Right. Like those are like the only two things that I can really think of. Right. Well, now like my classroom door has the key on the outside. To I mean you can lock it from the outside. But I can get out the other way. Right. My question is if if they locked the bathroom door from the front. Can you still open it from the inside? From I guess the inside. we don't we don't know. And really in say... a bathroom I'd rather it be lockable from the inside. Right. It's a bathroom. You know, I wouldn't I don't know. I just, I found that out. And then I, the key was left in the yeah, door. That's, that's bizarre. Yeah. That, that's just, it's just, it's just that is bizarre. odd. Yeah. It's an odd comment. Yeah. I don't know. That's weird. So I'm going to get into my five burning questions for this chapter. So let's start off with a nice and light question. Which position do you think you would want to play in Quidditch? And you have to play. Uh, so I've really thought about this question. Um, I want to be the beater. Yeah. Give me a bat and let me just beat things and hit things and knock it at things. That would be awesome. I'm I'm all about that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I I think I think I would want to be a, the keeper. It's uh Well that makes sense. Yeah. I was a goalie in soccer. Was well, a and a catcher in catcher baseball. Catcher in baseball. That's, it's, it's a similar skill set. It is. And, uh, it is. Yeah. I was nothing. I was the... You, you are nothing. That's not true. I was the cheerleader. That's true. And a theater person. That's true. I am the least athletic of all of us. I would not make a very good... Um, I'm not a very athletic person, but I think beater would be awesome. And, and I think <laughs> in Quidditch, you can almost get away 
yeah. with that. And because you if you have flying skill, that's a little different than True. full athleticism, Well, really. and I feel like, it, for me, it'd be easier to build some arm strength to hit a ball as opposed to catching and, like, dodging and throwing. Mm -hmm. As we all know, and as our mother will tell you, if I throw something at you, I'm going to miss if I'm aiming for you. <laughs> I have no skills in that. So I'm going to add to that. Let, let's build our team. Who's playing with us? Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. I uh, think. Who Who do you think would be the seeker? Riley. Riley. That's our, that's our youngest brother. I think Riley would be the seeker. I would put Abby on beater with me. We'd be fun. Yeah. No, I could see that. I think Bob would be a solid chaser. That's my husband. All right. Um, and then the other two brothers, Matthew and Benji, throw them on chaser too? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think that'd work. Excellent. So you started off the saying that I have to play. I'm going to take myself off the team. Yeah. And I'm going to put and Abby's husband, Joe. As the other beater. You know, the Marine as the other beater. I think that would be make a much better team than and I was And I think playing. you would make an incredible... Uh... Coach, team manager. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be great. I'd also make a pretty funny commentator. I think I could pull that off. Yeah, I think you'd do all right. Sounds good. So I'm going to jump to my next question. Have you ever smelled anything as rancid as that troll? Other than really bad diapers and the landfill that I pass as I drive those to work. Are, those are pretty bad. Not probably as bad as this description. How about you? Um, I don't know, but I do know what the worst thing I've ever smelled was. And it's it's not good. It's uh, similar to the diapers. It's... uh. <laughs> In in wastewater treatment plants, the 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 section that's called the activated sludge lagoon. Oh, gross! It's a cool name. <laughs> it is a terrible, terrible place to be uh, in July. Oh, that's yeah, not good because it's all open air and yeah, it it uh, it reeks. I still don't know if that is as bad as what this troll smells like. Is it like the fire swamp and the Princess Bride? probably oh that's bad i'm sorry and i never want to go there with you so please don't invite me yeah no i don't want to go again all so. right how much of how much favoritism is harry seeing due to his family or pity for his family or think... is it more based on the him taking voldemort out do you think Oh, I definitely think it's more of the fame piece as opposed to his family piece. He is the Harry Potter. He's the boy who lived. He's, you know, yeah. important and literally important in the historical context, context of their society. I don't think the kids are giving him favoritism. No. I do think it is coming a little bit from the teachers. Like, I mm -hmm. get that he's a very good flyer, but what if that had been Neville? What if Neville had shown that? Would mcgonagall have done the same thing right what if it had been ron what mm -hmm. if it had been seamus who had done that amazing dive thing would he, they get to be the seeker i doubt it yeah would they have actually been expelled right potentially now part of it is too his dad he has that family the lineage well-known lineage right his dad had that too and so so we know that his dad had it too so maybe she also put a little banking on his lineage of Quidditch skill, but he would not have gotten it, I don't think, if he wasn't the mm -hmm. Harry Potter. Because how cool is that? Oh, the Harry right. Potter, the youngest player in a century. Like, you just keep adding titles. Right. So, I mean, yeah, he he's, he's racking them up. And he doesn't ask for them. And I think that's what makes him such an endearing character. Yeah. Is that he, he really is that good. Mm -hmm. Or that lucky. Or that lucky. I mean, at, at least also true. at this point, he hasn't. Done, like you said, hasn't done anything right. out of the well, normal to really earn them. They've just, well, and luck comes down to being prepared for, you know, those times when the and, opportunity comes and up. Being able Be to prepared take the for the chance. opportunity. That's right. what luck is. Create your own luck. Right. But uh, my my thought was, I, I think you're right. It is coming from the fame, and in reality, how many other students are missing parents because of? Like Voldemort, none of them are seeing the favoritism. So, 
Right. I think it's absolutely the fame. Right. There's got to be a bunch of other students that are in a similar... You would assume. We don't know per se. No, but it says in the very beginning, at the very first chapter one, it says that the Pruitts were killed, the Bones were killed, and, and the, the McKinnons. McKinnons were killed. Like, that's three families right there that they went out of their way to tell us. Yeah. Three families were. You're telling me that there's not some kids that were related there's, to them yeah, or something? The numbers say there, ha there has to be right. other students with similar family backgrounds as Harry's. Yes. So it's got to be the fame yes. portion. Yes. So, whenever Hermione takes the blame for Harry and Ron uh, trapping the troll in with her, uh, right? She she really surprises Harry and Ron in you know the way she does that, and it's described as being so surprise as surprising as if Snape were handing out sweets. Could you see Snape handing out sweets ever? No. At Not least, even a little bit. Yeah, I mean... It, just no. Maybe, like, sour candies. Even then, no. <laughs> just... Yes. I mean, like, if that would be... That would definitely be the... You know, if you had to pick a candy to match your personality, that would be the one for him. But, mm -hmm. no, he he's the house on Halloween that's completely boarded up in black. And, mm -hmm. like, he probably sits there and glares out at the little kids just to scare him. Yeah, he's probably got huge trees around that you oh, can't, even, yeah. can't even see yep. into. But... No, definitely not. So that's pretty surprising. Yes. And my last question, we kind of touched on already, um, but how much of Harry's athletic prowess and ups, you know, jumping wise, do you think is contributed to his athletic talent, his raw athletic talent, or the stress driven magicalness? I don't know if it's necessarily talent as in like athletical prowess, but I definitely think it's um, a combination of. His, and we talked about this in the last episode, his leadership ability and sort of his jump in doerness. He isn't one to sort of hang back. That's sort of that courageous piece mm -hmm. that Gryffindor in him of just jumping in. And then you throw in that stress driven, stress driven magic that gives him that extra boost. So to the, it. the confidence in his own objective leads into more of the magical ability that that shows itself i wouldn't call it confidence i would just call it like natural like because i don't think he's like oh i'm good at this i'm just gonna jump in. it's just uh, well, i have to do it he's and not so second like, guessing it that's right. that's the comp right. style of confidence that i'm saying the yes. bravery bravery confidence i right. guess but uh yeah not like oh it's not swagger confidence mm -hmm. it's it's not second guessing his decision at that point right and i think that confidence in his decision well, and I wonder, um, I think of it as, and I'm going to reference another book series, so I apologize, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. Mm -hmm. um, Percy Jackson talks a lot about how like, ADD makes it very hard to focus on one thing at a time, but when he finds out that he's a demigod, if you haven't read them, they're fabulous, go read these books. When he we'll finds get out to he's them eventually. A, yeah, when you find out he's a demigod... You realize that that ADD, that inability to focus on one mundane task at a time, is actually like this huge helpful thing when it comes to fighting in a battle because you're able to do all these things at the same time and it's, it's a life saving things. skill. Yeah. And I kind of see that in Harry. Not that he's like the ADD kid that can't focus on things, but it's that immediate impulsivity piece that a lot of kids get in trouble for in school. That is really good in these situations. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm so impulsive, I don't have time to think. And a kid like me, who I think too much, would be too scared and timid to try. Harry just doesn't think. It, it, it's not a brain thing. It's, it's just, just a, a body it's, action. Yeah, it's a natural reaction yes. for him. That's, that is his element. Yes. So that impulsive reaction of doing is a much that's a highly regarded skill in the situations that he finds himself in where that stress-driven magic helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I probably won't get into that, but in general, it's a, a lot of, like, warrior tales kind of get into that. They're not, they're not good in normal human life. You put them in a battle right. situation, and they're untouchable. Right. And but here's what's you interesting. You look at them outside of that, and they're in their natural, you know, other people's natural world and, and they don't, they them. don't fit. Right. And so I kind of see that Harry actually spent, I mean, as, as miserable as his early life was, it was good training. 
for yeah. using those yeah, instincts. Absolutely. And that's that's where I think he some of the raw athletic talent comes in too because yes. we do know that he he does run a lot. He had to. And he was and, faster than everybody else because he right. had to be. So, and like, I think, so I think that's a small portion yes. that adds in. But yes. I think it's also, but I think it's all three of those that the, the uncanny leadership confidence, yes. uh, or in, you know, the, the, right. Whatever we were just saying. Uh, like the take charge kind of. Yeah. The take charge. We're going to do this. Yeah. And being magical helps. Yes. And the raw athletic talent. I think all three of those combine to, to really set him up for success yes. in these situations. Right. All right, on to the chapter superlatives. Luke, what was your favorite line in this chapter? So my favorite line, and it kind of, it, it's it's just kind of fun the way it, it's written. It's it's not the nicest thing that the boys do, but uh, uh, it, my favorite line was, Hermione was now refusing to speak to Harry and Ron, but she was such a bossy know-it-all that they saw this as an added bonus. <laughs> Again, I don't like the overall uh, uncaringness of of the thought behind it, but it is right. it is kind of funny because up till this point, that's all we know about her. Yep, and yep, it's kind of reasonable. My my runner up, not my favorite line, but my second favorite line in the chapter fits very well with that, and it's. I thought you weren't speaking to us, said Harry. Yeah, don't stop now, said Ron. It's doing us so much good. <laughs> it, 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 it's a funny way of showing just how annoyed they are with her. Yeah. Okay. But my actual favorite line, which is the one that turns that whole relationship on its cheek, is, But from that moment on, Hermione Granger became their friend. There are some things you can't share without ending up liking each other. And knocking out a 12-foot mountain troll is one of them. Yeah, that's it's that's good. It's nice to see that they they finally have found their common ground together. Yes, and uh, yeah, that's a that's a crazy way of becoming friends. It's hard not to. Well, I mean, that's your survivors thing, you know. When you yeah. go through a major traumatic incident mm -hmm. with somebody, you have a connection to them that nobody else who didn't go through it right. Can you survive understand. a shipwreck with somebody you didn't even know. Right, you're gonna get to know them pretty exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah. So, for the, for the chapter MVP, I'm going to give it to Professor Flitwick for his superb teaching style <laughs> in using Neville's toad to demonstrate the charm, and uh, and then praising Hermione for actually doing it, doing the the job correctly. I thought it was a it was a good job of you know seeing a student that is picking it up. Yes. And and praising that student, but not over the top, where it's right. you know doesn't look like in class favoritism on that. True, so just somebody seem, doing a seem good like job. a healthy healthy All teaching right. style. My honorable mention goes to Hermione for a couple of reasons. One, as painful as it was to watch her being upset, it was nice to finally see her noticing that her actions and her words are having consequences on other people. Mm -hmm. Because I think up until this point, she didn't even know the way she was Being affecting perceived. others or didn't care. But at this point she's finally getting to the point where, okay, I care and I just can't take it. Mm -hmm. And then I think she learns from it because she does step up and help the boys. She has and... a lot of character growth in this yes. chapter. And, and from what we see at least. True. Yes. But I, I, that's a, that's a, that's a good pick. She definitely uh, seems to come around and we'll see if, we'll see if, Ron could do the same. <laughs> Someday. Yeah. All right, listeners, thank you for joining us this week. As always, we would be happy to hear from you. Questions, comments, thoughts, or just telling us you're alive at Not Name Podcast on Twitter, on the website, thepodcastthat.com, or you can email us at thepodcastthatmustnotbenamed at gmail.com. Next week, we will be taking a break from our chapter-by-chapter -chapter summaries and hitting our five-chapter recap episode, complete with a recap of what we've just read, and we open up the unrestricted section where we talk about the things that we've read so far and how that connects to later on in the plot. If you are reading for the first time with us, we strongly encourage you to join us in two weeks when we get back for Chapter 11. Quidditch.
because we don't want to ruin the future story for you. Those of you who are Harry Potter addicts as we are, please come and listen to us try to make as many connections as we can. Thank you all. Have a great day.